almost every day that I was there, I hit some kind of heartbreaking moment in a way that I haven't, I haven't experienced in years of working with MSF. If you ask them about their families, they said they didn't have a family anymore. And, um, yeah, that was it. They were there by themselves. And you could get these same kind of stories from anybody. They had to sell everything to get there, um, that their homes had been destroyed, that they had nothing to go back to. That there was nobody who, who really wanted to be there. At the same time, this was the safest place that they could find. The berm is a pile of dirt that delineates the border between Jordan and Syria, uh, and it runs for hundreds of kilometers uh, from along the Jordan-Syria border. Ever since the northern borders have been closed, uh, people have been seeking alternate ways to get out of Syria, all of them fleeing the conflict. Estimates of how many people are at the berm are a little bit hard to come by. There's somewhere between 50 and 100,000, kind of depending on where you look and how you count. There's absolutely nothing but just a completely barren desert out in the area. It's completely inhospitable to human, to human life. This time of year, it's extremely hot, like above 100 degrees Fahrenheit on any given day from people's personal testimonies. Um, now, conditions in the, in the camp are extremely, extremely uh, basic, um, quite harsh. The, when sandstorms come through, like tents are destroyed and um, just get lifted up. It's hot, it's dry. There's no work, there's no money to be made at this stage in the war. Whatever people have left, they've spent to get to the berm. Not enough water, not enough food, um, and, and people who haven't had access to regular health care for, for years because of, the, because of the violence. MSF was present there for about five weeks. And during that five weeks, we were able to visit 22 times with our mobile clinics. We found that just about everybody who was there had some level of, of unmet health care need. Um, these are people that haven't had r routine vaccinations in the last five years. They haven't had access to their regular health care uh, for, for several years. People with issues like heart problems and, and diabetes um, that were untreated as well. In addition to the fact that they had no emergency medical services. On June 21st, there was an attack on the military base just on the other side of the berm. Uh, and since that date, the entire service area has been closed to humanitarian aid. In the 22 days that MSF had access to that population with our mobile clinics, we found a, a, a situation that was that was not acceptable. Um, the, the levels of diarrhea, the people who didn't have access to emergency medical care, the number of pregnant women, um, the people who were suffering from respiratory and skin diseases, um, and general malnutrition. That was while the water was going. That's while the food was going. Um, that's while the health care services were being provided. Ever since the border's been closed, all of that stopped. So we don't really know exactly what's happening there now, but we can say with some certainty that it hasn't gotten better. Um, Syria is not in a position to be able to provide these people with these services from the inside, and with the border closed, humanitarian aid can't reach this population. The real solution is an end to the war. Um, for these people who are right there, what they need is, is humanitarian assistance. They need access to water and food and health care. Um, but assistance is not a solution. MSF has called on the international community to provide uh, asylum to the people who are seeking it. There is no real solution for them to go back into Syria because it's not safe. Um, so the international community has a real responsibility to respond to the real human needs of these people.